Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, my name is Liam Butler, as Jennifer mentioned. And I'm going to be talking to you today about bridges with nerves of glass, or gathering data with fiber optic sensor networks. And that phrase, nerves of glass, isn't mine. It was uh, coined by Professor Raymond Measures from the University of Toronto back in a landmark paper back in 1989. And he was referring to aerospace structures. Well, lots happened since then, and we've been applying it into the civil engineering sector, specifically in bridges. And traditionally, asset management has been done by using visual observation data. Um, but again, now in the, in the recent decades or so, we've been able to take this a little step further with new and innovative structural uh, monitoring systems that are providing smarter and more robust data for our um, using embedded fiber optic sensing networks. Um, so in addition to that, they also help us to establish these performance baselines that really become asset management tools in long-term performance monitoring of our civil infrastructure. So, the project itself that I'll be talking about is the 250 million pound rail and development project known now as the Stafford Area Improvements Program um, with the aims of increasing train speeds up to 160 kilometers per hour while reducing congestion and improving maintainability by essentially creating grade separated junctions which also includes 11 new bridge structures. So we've looked at two of these bridge structures and we've instrumented them with fiber optics in several basic goals, looking at the fundamental structural response, evaluating overall set sensor network robustness, and as mentioned, establishing these comprehensive performance baselines at the outset of, of, the, of the project. And the next steps. So this is the sort of the breakdown we've been looking at is the, the fiber optic sensors themselves, going on to the monitoring plan, our deployment of our sensors, and then of course the monitoring itself. So it all really starts with the fiber optics themselves, the sensors or the nerves that are going to make up this bridge that makes up the bridge with nerves of glass. So we've used two types of sensors. We use a distributed system based on brilliant opti optical time domain reflectometry and fiber brag gratings, which are discrete point strains or point sensors, which can give high sampling rates of up to a thousand hertz. So we've used both of these sort of in combination to get a variety of different information from our structures. The nervous system for one of our bridges under bridge 11. So the concrete deck and some of the transverse ties, we've got over 40 FBGs in some of those. And the pre-stressed beams, we have both the distributed BOTDR and those FBG point sensors in, in both of those systems. The next bridge, which will be intersection bridge, 11, intersection bridge 5, which is a steel half-through bridge, slightly longer in span. Again, we've mainly instrumented this with FBG sensors, so the main girders, the concrete deck, the web stiffeners, and cross beams. With over 200 FBGs, uh, these both bridges represent sort of a first that bridges like this have been instrumented in such detail. On to the deployment. Installing fiber optic sensors in pre-stressed concrete beams. This was back in January of 2015. And as you can see, it was a little difficult getting our hands in and out and trying to fit all of our sensors through these very tightly congested reinforcing cages. But Using, this, um, using these sensors, we've been able to start looking at pre-stressing losses. The next stage took us on to installing fiber optics right onto our structural steel girders, the top and bottom flanges. So this was just this past summer on a particularly nice sunny day. And we're using a structural epoxy here to, um, to in, in, install, our, uh, install our fiber brag grading sensors. But it wasn't without its challenges. And some solutions we found along the way. So that was back in January in a pre-cast yard. We, we found a lot of uh, in, in, interesting weather, uh, a lot of splicing, on-site splicing and prep on-site, a lot of handling of very fine, delicate cables, and uh, at the end also having to find a way to fit it all into some kind of box that we can access things in the future. So monitoring. As mentioned, uh, pre-stressing beams, we're really looking at time-dependent behavior. So from a design perspective, it's things like pre-stress losses over time. And so by instrumenting right from the beginning of a beam, we really have that load history right from, if you like, the birth of our beam right up until it's up onto, onto the bridge. Next, we looked at monitoring construction staging in real time. So this was actually also in the summer. And we were, there's where our sort of um, fiber optics were, were positioned. And uh, this was sort of monitoring in real time the construction of the uh, concrete deck being poured. And so we can see how the different dead load is going to be affecting the bridge. So our next uh, thing we looked at, I'm calling the jumping Jason. So Jason's our lab technician over here. So this is the excitation girder excitation test um, or dynamic strain monitoring. And um, so this was sort of just to give us a bit of a, 
uh, a sense of what kind of uh, vibration characteristics, and J Jason was jumping in about two hertz there, so two jumps a second, so that was, uh, let us know that our sensors were able to pick up that kind of dynamic strain behavior that we're eventually going to want to capture um, in the next stage. The next goal is obviously these are railway structures. One is rail over rail, the other is going to be rail over stream, and so we are going to want real live rail loading eventually. And um, that, as it stands now on the project, is looking to be into the spring of next year. And so at that time, again, we'll be doing some periodic monitoring, going out, getting these things like the dynamic characteristics of our structure, and, um, and hopefully finding out a lot more about how rail loading is affecting these types of bridges as well with these, with these sensors. Well, it's more than just getting a bunch of numbers in and, and, and having a bunch of sensors on our bridge and over 400 uh, meters of, of distributed sensing cable. But it's really things like those pre-stress losses, those time-dependent losses we want to look at in our concrete elements. We want to look at things like the onset of composite action and composite behavior. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, if we, let's see if this uh, will work. So again, yeah, looking ahead towards next summer. <laughs> this is, as I was mentioning, our uh, slow speed rail line. <laughs> um, so I'm taking this photo actually from the top of one of the bridges and hopefully by next summer that those trains will be running over, over our bridge. Um, so as mentioned, some of the smart data we can really get from these fiber optic sensor networks is the time dependent behavior of concrete beams, this onset of composite action between steel girders or the deck and the, and the, and the girder system, and also the dynamic characterization characterization of these big structures, which then we can use in our finite element models and provide updates. So this would all not be possible without our industry and academic partners, and as well as indeed they'll be probably the end users of a lot of the data we're going to be gathering. So um, our bridge asset owners, our designers of our bridge, our contractors, and as well as other monitoring teams and possibly other researchers who could also be um, hopefully benefit from, from what we've done so far with this project. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>